Hello Internet, my name is Patrick and this is Fringeworthy, a show where I talk to you about weird magic decks. And for the first time ever on this channel, we're talking about a standard deck. That's right, if you go to MTG Top 8 right now, you see a lot of aggro and control options and nothing in combo. But there is a combo deck you could be playing in standard and it's Vanifar Pod. Let's break down the deck and see how it works. Now Vanifar Pod is a very interesting standard deck. There's a lot of different lines that you'll need to be a prepared to take that all branch out from each other. But the main core trunk of this is sort of Prime Speaker Vanifar and these two untapping creatures, Hyrax Tower Scout and Corridor Monitor. By these, we can actually tap Prime Speaker Vanifar to sack a one mana creature, get a Corridor Monitor to untap Prime Speaker Vanifar, to then sack the Corridor Monitor for a Hyrax Tower Scout, untapping Vanifar, sacking the Tower Scout and get a four drop creature. So any of our one drops can turn into four drops. Now, what four drops specifically are we looking for? Nothing other than Nightmare Shepherd. Nightmare Shepherd makes it so any of our creatures that die, which includes when they're sacrificed, we can exile them and get 1-1 one, one copies. This means we now have double the chances to untap and double any of our other ETB triggers by sacrificing them. Now, we need another sacrifice outlet that doesn't require tapping so that we can actually sacrifice some of our creatures to untap Prime Speaker Vanifar, and that's where Woe Strider comes into play. We also have our finishing condition here, which is Gary the Grey Merchant of Ashfidel. He'll come in, drain our opponents for a bunch of life, and then we can sack him to Woe Strider to drain our opponents for even more when the token 1-1 one, one copy comes in. Keep in mind also that these 1-1 one, one copy tokens made by Nightmare Shepherd have the same converted mana cost as the original card, which allow us to continue on the chain or keep our devotion to black up high enough. Now, of course, to get this off the ground quickly, we need our Gilded Geese and Paradise Druids to ramp us on some mana. We also have Spark Double here, which can, in a pinch, fill in for any of these creatures when we need extra copies of them. Most likely, it's going to come in as extra copies of the Grey, of the Grey Merchant of Ashfidel if we drew one when we didn't need to. We've also got Assassin's Trophy as a key piece of removal, and Kiora the Behemoth Beckoner, another way to draw cards when we've got our Nightmare Shepherds coming into play, and another untap outlet. We're also running two Neoforms as a way to sort of skip ahead in these chains, find our specific creatures we need, and three Incubation Incongruities. This sort of fits a dual purpose. Early game, we can be using it to look deep in our deck for the creatures we need, and mid to late game we can use incongruity to remove problematic creatures our opponents have. Now for the land base, it's a bit of a hodgepodge. The problem here being that there are times where we want to be able to cast something that has blue and green in its mana cost, and then the next turn be able to cast something with double black in its mana cost. So for that purpose, we have a whole smattering of lands here. If you don't have specifically these lands, you can try and find them however you can. The shocks are not actually used as much as you would think, uh, and using the life gain lands or guild gates is a suitable substitute. Onto the sideboard, we're running two Casamina's Transmutations as a way to deal with more problematic creatures. We've got two more Assassin's Trophies in case we need extra spot removal. Uh, I'm running two Mystic Repeals because I was facing, at least while I was tuning this deck, a lot of gods that needed to be tucked onto the bottom of libraries. We're also running two Disfigure to deal with other creatures that are small that need to be dealt with. We've got Aether Gust to deal with red and green permanents, specifically Uro and, uh, and some of the other things like um, Hydras and such. And we've also got Mystical Dispute to deal with other control decks, or I guess not other control decks, but control decks. All right, but what does comboing off really look like in this deck? So we're going to look at it right now. I've got an untapped non-summoning sick Prime Speaker Vanifar and some creature I can sacrifice. You can do this with a Goose or with a Paradise Druid or really anything else. I'm going to do it with a Paradise Druid because that's what I happen to have. That's going to turn into my Hyrax Tower Scout, which will untap the Prime Speaker Vanifar. And then the Hyrax Tower Scout is going to turn into a Nightmare Shepherd. Ideally, we'd have all four in our deck, but we can still combo off and go for the kill with two of them in our deck, sometimes even one. Now, with Prime Speaker Vanifar still tapped and the Nightmare Shepherd out, we need a way to untap Prime Speaker Vanifar and start our chain over again. For that, we're going to cast Corridor Monitor from our hand. 
This is one where corridor monitor is important. You can't quite do this as robustly with a Hyrax Tower Scout. This first corridor monitor is going to first turn into a 1-1 token, thanks to the Nightmare Shepherd. That 1-1 token is going to untap the Prime Speaker Vanifar, and you'll note here it does still have its mana cost. And we're actually going to get a Woe Strider, since we already have Prime Speaker Vanifar untapped. From here, we're going to get our Hyrax Tower Scout, and here's where it gets a little funky. We'll untap the Prime Speaker here, and if we actually go all the way through, we end up with just two more Nightmare Shepherds, and that's not quite enough to get us to the kill. So we're actually going to sacrifice one of these Goat tokens to get a Gilded Goose. This gets us a food token, which we don't really care about. Now to untap our Prime Speaker Vanifar, we're actually going to use Woe Strider to sacrifice the Scout. Nightmare Shepherd lets us make a 1-1 copy by exiling it. And then we'll use that to untap Prime Speaker Vanifar. And now we're pretty much right back where we started uh, when we began this whole combo. We can sacrifice this goose and get a 2-2 two -two, or a 2 mana corridor monitor. We'll get another goose here for, just for good measure. We may need it a little later down the line. Get the corridor monitor. Untap the Prime Speaker Vanifar. Again, this first corridor monitor here is going to turn into our second Woe Strider, just so we have a little bit more devotion to black and a little bit of redundancy in case of any uh, instant speed removal our opponent may have. Doesn't look like they have any this time, but uh, good to always play around that to get into habit in the future. Uh, and then this time we're going to go up to a Hyrax Tower Scout. Untap the Prime Speaker. And here we're going to do something a little weird. We're going to actually sacrifice the Goose find ourselves another corridor monitor and from here we're going to get all our nightmare shepherds is the goal so first we'll sacrifice the not the actual card version of the hyrax tower scout that way we get a token copy to untap and get a nightmare shepherd and here we're going to sacrifice one of the token copies which means we don't get another one and we don't get an untap to get another nightmare shepherd now to untap here we'll do like we did before we'll sacrifice the corridor monitor make a corridor monitor token have lots more triggers on the stack, even though the same thing is going to happen. That trigger is going to untap the Prime Speaker Vanifar. We don't care about our scry. We're going to turn this into one more Hyrax Tower Scout. It's our last one. Good, I didn't miscount. And from here, if you had the fourth Nightmare Shepherd in your deck, you would go grab that. Since I don't have that, I'm actually going to grab the Spark Double to be our fourth Nightmare Shepherd. And from here, we have Lethal. So we'll untap the Prime Speaker Vanifar, and then we'll get Spark Double copying Nightmare Shepherd. And from here, we'll sacrifice one of our Nightmare Shepherds, choosing, of course, to make a 1-1 copy of that one. And from here, we get a Grey Merchant of Ashvidel. This will drain our opponent for 12. And then we will use the Woe Strider to sacrifice the Grey Merchant of Ashvidel, get a 1-1 copy of it, and drain our opponent for another 12. Simple as that. Now, all sorts of variations on this combo chain will exist depending on your situation, what cards you have left in hand, what cards you have left in deck, so you have plenty of different routes to victory. Well, that about wraps up this episode of Fringeworthy, except for one little thing. I didn't really go into the matchups in detail here. I did talk about some of the sideboard cards, and I think boarding them in is pretty straightforward based on what you're seeing on the other side of the table. But with Akoria releasing right around the corner, didn't really want to date the video because I don't know what the standard meta is going to look like in even one or two weeks' time. So use your best judgment, adapt your sideboard, that's the number one place where you can make improvements to a deck to change your match win percentage. Anyways, that really is all the time that I've got in this video, so please, if you liked it, please subscribe. I'm saying please a lot, but I really do want you to subscribe if you like these videos. I've got more coming out the rest of this week and soon after as well. Um, if you've got ideas for decks, whether just a card to base it around or an entire deck list, leave it down in the comments. I'll look at it, and hopefully it could be in a future video. Have a great rest of your day, and I hope to see you again next time.